وسلم على نبينا الكريم وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد I'd like to talk about a very very important hadith that I mention quite frequently and it's the hadith of iftarak the hadith which talks about the breaking of the community into groups and sects the hadith and it has many many uh, various narrations of the hadith and because of its various uh, ways of transmission the scholars many of the scholars like Imam Tirmidhi uh, Imam Al-Albani from this time Rahimahullah and many of the scholars of hadith have uh, authenticated this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam Ibn Hajjim wa Ibn Shaykh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah jami'an and in this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in some of the more famous ruwayat hadith of Muawiyah Ibn Abi Sufyan radiallahu ta'ala ibn Muad qal qama fina rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam faqal إلا أن من قبلكم من أهل الكتاب اشتركوا على ثنتين وسبعين ملة وإن هذه الملة ستفتركوا على ثلاثة وسبعين ثنتان وسبعين في النار وواحدة في الجنة وهي جماعة So one of the narrations is the narration of Muawiyah ibn Sufyan رضي الله تعالى عنه he said that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to us or he stood up amongst us and he said uh, verily that those who came before you from the people of the book of the Kitab, meaning the Jews and the Christians that they divided into uh, 72 sects And that this nation, or this uh, this community, would divide into seventy-three sects, seventy-two in the fire, and one in Jannah. And they are the Jamaat; they are the main group of the Muslims, the main body of Muslims. And in another narration. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم استرقة اليهود على إحدى وسبعين فرقة على إحدى أو إثنتين وسبعين فرقة وستفترك وتفترك وتفترك النصارى على إحدى أو إثنتين وسبعين فرقة وتفترك أمتي على ثلاثة وسبعين فرقة uh, in another narration, the narration of uh, Abu Hurairah who said that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said the Jews uh, broke into 71 or 72 sects and the Christians broke into 71 or 72 sects uh, and my nation or Ummati, they would break into 73 sects and in another narration, which is Mashur, the one that I usually mention, The Prophet said that the Jews were breaking 71 sects and the Christians in 72 sects and my Ummah were breaking 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. And the companions of Allah Ta'ala and Majma'in, they said, Who are the Ya Rasulullah? He said, Those who are upon I, what I'm upon in my companions of Allah Ta'ala and Majma'in. From those various narrations, there are many, many benefits that the ulama bring about, and I just want to mention a few things. One of the things is that the ummah here, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the community he's talking about, is the community of Muslims. You know, that the, the, the Ummah al Islamiyya. And that we would uh, divide into groups. 
and sects, and then splitting the religion in the similar way that the Jews and Christians did before us. And that we would break into 73 sects, as the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned. And that only one of them would be saved, as the Prophet Sallallahu said. And the rest of them uh, will be in the fire. And the reason the ones, the one would be saved is because they're domestic, because they're the mutamesikim or the mutamesikum. Those people were holding on strongly to what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions were upon, and they didn't innovate and divide the community or the, uh, the religion of Islam. They didn't innovate in the religion of Islam. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu described them as jama'ah, as those people who are uh, a group or those people who come together. Because that's the opposite. Tafarak is when you split and you divide. So our job is to bring the Muslims together, but based on the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet and the understanding of the Salaf al not upon our desires, not upon new methodologies, new creeds, new types of worship, but based on the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet and the understanding of the companions of so our job is to come together. And as the scholars mentioned, they were described with being the jama'at of those people who come together upon the truth, al haq As for the rest of the groups, then they have divided. And some of them have taken some of the religion. Some, maybe they practice a, an important aspect of the religion. But then they leave out other aspects. And so due to this fact of taking only part of the religion or dividing the, the religion and, and deviating in the religion of, of Al Islam, that they are rightfully deserving of punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the Prophet said. And this is why the Prophet said, Kullaha finnar in the wahid. He said, All of them are in the fire, except one. The scholars differ over this statement regarding the hadith, and we will put forth one view. One of the views is that when the Prophet said, Kulaha Finnar, that all the, that means that they're in the hellfire, that this includes those people who are outside the Book of Islam, meaning those people who consider themselves Muslims, but they are actually not in the Book of Islam. For example, the Rafa the Shia, those people who make the Kafir the Sahaba and curse Aisha and say she's an adulteress and stuff, they're not even Muslim. They're not even somebody Martevan. You don't even consider them as uh, Muslims. So they are for sure in the fire, Khalidina Fiha, forever. Because they say the Quran is created or the Quran is incomplete or it's distorted. The Sahaba put it together and they distorted and took out verses. All kind of lies. Their religion is built upon lying and, and deception. Whereas Ahl Sunnah bases their thing upon the truth, bases their faith upon. Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet and the understanding of companions of Allah which is a very big difference. We've got to notice this difference and see where it leads us. One leads us to the fire, one leads us to Jannah So Ahlahak, they come together. So as, as we mentioned, a group of the ulama, they say that they, you know, that it includes those individuals. But inshallah, bi idnillah, the most correct opinion from amongst the opinions of the scholars, not my opinion. Again, we're mentioning the scholars' uh, opinions. Is that the, and this is, I believe, what the Jamhur are upon, the majority of the scholars are upon, that the, uh, those people who the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, Kulahaf and Nawa and Wahida, all those, uh, they're all those, meaning those sects before that split, they're in the hellfire. Not that they're in the hellfire forever. This is the punishment that they will be in the in the hellfire, because similar to the people who do the major sins, that they do major sins, they will spend some time in the fire, and if Allah forgives them, they're tahta meaning that if Allah subhanahu wa taala 
He forgives them. They will, uh, they, if Allah forgives them, they, don't, they will not even receive the punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is al ghafur al al ghafur rahim He is the most benefit, the, the most merciful, and He is the most loving and the most compassionate. So if He chooses to forgive them, then they can be pardoned from that punishment completely, even with their bid'ah, even with their major sins that they were doing. They can be forgiven, as long as they're the Muwahideen, as long as they're somebody who worships Allah alone. They're from Ahl Tawheed, they're Muslim, Asli. These people, the Ahl Kabaya, they can be forgiven by Allah and not have to have the punishment. And if they are punished, they will not be in the hellfire forever. This is the belief of Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah. And so this is the case with those people who fall under this, who have fallen into bid'ah. And, you know, Ahl Bid'ah al Ahwa, people like the various groups and sects, like we mentioned the Khawarij, we mentioned uh, Jahmiyyah, we mentioned Mu'tazila, we mentioned Ash, uh, the Ash'ari, we mentioned the Qadriya, and all these, in the Ma'akala, and all these other groups and sects that their beliefs, those that are in the fold of Islam, the ulama mi takfir, the jahmiya, uh, those groups that are within the fold of Islam, that as long as they're a Muslim, and even if they died upon that bid'ah, they're tahtu mashiach illam, if Allah, inshallah, yagfurum, inshallah, yusana, uh, you know, he will forgive them. He will forgive them or he will punish them. Punish them. That's, that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, tabarak wa ta'ala. That's his, uh, he is the, the, the most just and he is the most, he's the creator of the heavens and earth and that's his divine right, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so also from the verse in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that he doesn't forgive the people who commit polytheism, you know, who die upon the major form of polytheism that takes out of the Islam. Call it subhanahu in the law la yaqfu wa yushri kabihi Verily, Allah does not forgive that you commit, associate partners with him, but he forgives whomsoever he pleases for whatever, uh, whomsoever he pleases for other than that. Meaning you do other sins, if you do bid'ah, if you do some other things that don't take you out of the fold of Islam, then uh, you're attacked on the Inshallah, you know, in, 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 in the law, you will be forgiven or you will spend some time in the fire and then taken out of the fire. That time of the fire is a purification. Those are some of the benefits of the hadith. And we ask that Allah the Almighty accepts our good and forgives our evil and protects us from bid'ah as bid'ah is rejected.